Thank you for choosing Cooper Bearings. We created this instructional video to assist you in successfully installing a new split roller bearing for maximum safety and bearing life. This video is intended to be used with the installation guide included with your bearing. Please refer to the installation guide for torque values, wrench sizes, grease volumes, and selection of lubricants. Unwrap the bearing parts and remove the preservative and protective wrapping from the bearing components. Note that all components have match marks. Be careful not to interchange parts. There are three options for cage joints. For U-clips, remove the steel U-clips using a small flathead screwdriver. For steel cages, insert a small flathead screwdriver into one of the slots in the upper tab at the joint. Repeat for the second joint. Spring joining plates are separated by lifting the joining plates over locating pins using a flathead screwdriver. If mounting a new bearing into an existing cartridge housing, the outer race will need to be fitted into the cartridge. First, clean the outer race seat of the cartridge. Place the outer race in the cartridge so the match marks coincide and the outer race half with the lubrication hole is in the top of the housing. Insert the radial securing screws with washers, finger tight when provided, subject to size and series. Assemble the two halves of the cartridge and fully tighten the joint screws. Ease the pressure on the screws, then fully tighten the radial securing screws, when provided, and or the side screws. Retighten the cartridge joint screws and check the joints of the outer race track for a smooth transition. Ensure that all grease passages are full by applying a grease gun to the grease fitting and noting fresh grease discharging through the lubrication hole in the top of the outer race. The Cooper split roller bearing in this demonstration is a complete pillow block assembly. When installing multiple bearings, the GR, fixed bearing, which locates the shaft axially, is typically installed first, followed by EX, expansion bearings. To keep the load off the bearing during the assembly procedure, raise the shaft slightly and support it with blocks. First, check the shaft to make sure it's round and parallel. Tolerances will vary by each application. Check the installation guide included with your bearing. Separate aluminum triple labyrinth seal halves by driving out two joining pins with a 1 8 inch pin punch. Lubricate bore of each seal with grease. Assemble seal halves on shaft, ensuring cooper and shaft size are stamped on the same side. Compress O-rings against shaft so that holes in tongue and groove joints line up. Squeeze joining pins into place using channel locks. Position lower pedestal or flange half and secure using hold down bolts and washers. You may leave bolts slightly loose until final alignment is achieved. If shims are used, make sure entire pedestal base is supported with a full shim. Disassemble inner race and clamp rings, keeping matched halves together. The side face of clamp rings and inner race will have match mark numbers near split lines. Position two inner race halves on shaft, centered on spherical seat of pedestal. Split lines of inner race should be vertical at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock positions. Insert feeler gauge in bottom split line. This will keep both split lines approximately equal. Install clamp ring half with through hole into the inner race grooves with guide lip towards roller path. Offset clamp ring split lines from inner race split lines. Now install lower clamp ring half with threaded hole and bottom. Observing match mark numbers, finger tighten clamp ring screws, ensuring gaps at each clamp ring split lines are approximately equal. 
Remove feeler gauge from bottom inner race split line. Next, inner race needs to be positioned in relation to GR outer race or EX outer race. Position inner race for GR fixed type bearing. Temporarily rotate lower cartridge half with GR outer race into pedestal. Lower cartridge half does not have lubrication port or grease nipple. Place one half of roller cage assembly on top of inner race. Slide or tap inner race sideways until roller cage assembly rotates freely into grooved outer race. Tighten clamp ring screws evenly to secure inner race to shaft. Remove both roller cage assembly and lower cartridge half. Position inner race for EX expansion type bearing. Temporarily rotate lower cartridge half with EX outer race into pedestal base. Lower cartridge half does not have lubrication port or grease nipple. Place one half of roller cage assembly on top of inner race. Rotate roller cage assembly into flat outer race. Tap or slide inner race sideways so rollers are centered on outer race. If additional expansion capability is required, the roller can be offset at this time toward the GR fixed bearing to allow more room for expansion. Tighten clamp ring screws evenly to secure inner race to shaft. Remove both roller cage assembly and lower cartridge half. Now that inner race is in correct position, Clamp rings need proper seating and screws fully tightened. Clamp rings are seated by tapping down each half of clamp rings around shaft using a dead blow hammer. Screws should be tightened to keep clamp ring gaps approximately equal. Seat clamp rings down hard a second time and retighten to recommended torque. Continue seating torque process until no more movement is seen in clamp ring screws. Check to ensure the gaps at each inner race split line are approximately equal. Lightly grease roller path of inner race. Apply grease to rollers, rotating to force grease into cage pockets. Assemble roller cage halves around inner race dependent upon cage type. U-clips. One side of cage will have circular impressions. Use this as match marks. Press joining clips in place, one at each joint. Steel cage. Engage male tab into female tab until joint snaps together. Repeat for other cage joint. Spring joining plates. Push two cage halves together until joining plate clips over protruding pins. Rotate cage assembly around inner race several times to ensure nothing is binding. This also distributes grease. Before rotating lower cartridge half into pedestal base, decide which side you would prefer to have the grease boss located. Lower cartridge half dictates which side the grease boss will be located. Apply grease to lower half outer race and fill labyrinth grooves in cartridge half. Coat the outside spherical diameter with an anti-seize or similar compound. Slide ATL seal in position to engage center labyrinth into center labyrinth groove of cartridge half. Do this for each seal. Shaft may need to be raised to rotate lower cartridge half into pedestal base. The top half outer race has a lubrication entry hole at top dead center. Apply grease to upper half outer race and fill labyrinth grooves in cartridge half. Prime lubrication port or grease nipple until grease purges out of the lubrication hole. Coat outside spherical diameter with an anti-seize or similar compound. Assemble top cartridge half into bottom cartridge half observing match mark numbers. Tighten cartridge joint screws to torque value listed in installation guide. Now you can lower the shaft and load will be applied to bearing.
assemble pedestal cap or top flange half onto bottom, checking for match mark numbers. Finger tighten cap bolts. Slowly rotate shaft several rotations to ensure nothing is binding and bearing, and allow cartridge to swivel and ball and socket. This allows bearing to align. Tighten cap bolts to proper torque values. Before running the newly installed bearing, please review the assembly checklist. We hope you found this instructional video helpful. If you need additional assistance, please contact Cooper as listed in the installation guide. We appreciate your business and thank you for choosing Cooper Bearings.